Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's main event. It's spring break, and what better way to celebrate the absolute absence of higher learning and common decency than with the frat house classic, Old School. Well, probably the movie Spring Breakers. I mean, you're not really going to beat that. But since Old School just had its 15th anniversary, maybe we throw these old guys a bone. Say yes. Yes. So take good notes for the quiz, because here are seven things you didn't know about Old School. Probably. Pace yourself. Copy that. Old School at the time of release was seen as a new school take on classics like Animal House, but its inspiration was a bit more contemporary. Old School was originally intended to be a comedy version of Fight Club. What? And the evidence of this is pretty clear. Writer and director Todd Phillips and Scott Armstrong spent two months at executive producer Ivan Reitman's house working on a script about a down on his luck worker bee who's persuaded by a confident friend to start a cult for men with the intention of improving their lives through shenanigans. With Luke Wilson and Vince Vaughn filling in for the narrator and Tyler Durden respectively, I guess that makes Will Ferrell Robert Paulson? Oh, that's yeah, that checks out. Old School is chock full of great comedic talent on the rise, from lesser knowns like Rob Corddry and Matt Walsh to the just about to hit superstar in Will Ferrell. Though it might surprise you to know that the studio was not so confident in the comedic abilities of Vince Vaughn. He made huge comedic waves seven years prior with Swingers, but had since moved on to more serious roles which the suits were more familiar with. Luckily, Todd Phillips convinced them otherwise, and they squeezed him into the cast at the last minute. So last minute, in fact, that they couldn't start rolling on this wedding scene until he signed his contract which is, boom, a bonus thing. And a segue! After Old School, Vince Vaughn went even farther with his comedy career, becoming a member of what the critics dubbed the Frat Pack. But geographically speaking, he didn't go very far at all. Just two years later for Wedding Crashers, he was back at the same altar, in the same church, this time with Owen Wilson. Oh, yeah, and Will Ferrell makes a cameo there, too. Not exactly stretching their wings, but hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Speaking of cameos, director Todd Phillips pops in to play this less than punctual pervert. I'm here for the gangbang. But what you might not know is this character, affectionately referred to as Mr. Creepy, is a recurring character in Todd Phillips movies. He first shows up in Road Trip and then pops up whenever a sleazy sex weirdo is needed, which seems to be pretty often. And if you think about it, Mr. Creepy is basically the Stan Lee of the Todd Phillips verse, except more lecherous, as if that were even possible. Will Ferrell was the clear breakout performance in Old School, and many of his scenes have become the stuff of comedy legend. Tell anyone about this, I'll kill you. However, one of his best scenes wasn't originally written with him in mind. This rhythmic gymnastics routine was actually meant for Luke Wilson, who straight up refused to do it after a long day of shooting. You can actually see his look of exhaustion on the sidelines. So Ferrell stepped in and whipped up this magic in motion to save the day. And for all the credit given to comedians for improvised lines, not enough is said about improvised choreography. Am I right? Moving on. But without a doubt, Farrell's streaking is maybe his biggest standout scene in the movie. Literally. According to the cast and crew, the big cat, as Farrell became known on set, declined to wear what they call a marble bag during his nude scenes. So this shot of him running down the street, all Farrell. And if you were able to look past those buns and notice that he has great running form, you just spotted a boom bonus thing. Will Ferrell is actually a marathon runner, and later that year he ran the Boston Marathon and made the cover of Runner's World. Looking good, big cat. Looking real good. Honey, do you think KFC's still open? Let's end where the production ended, at Mitchapalooza. This massive house party was actually the last scene they shot and should have been a quick shoot, but it ended up taking much longer than expected. The trouble was that party headliner Snoop Dogg was having a little trouble getting out of his trailer. So it was Vince Vaughn who stepped in and emceed for the better part of an hour and a half to keep the 300 extras lively and ready for Snoop. Though we can't say for sure why he was reluctant to leave his trailer, it might have been that he was only appearing in old school as a favor to Todd Phillips for being cast as Huggy Bear in Starsky and Hutch. But it's a good thing he did. Who knows if he would have gotten another chance to see Will Ferrell's penis. Snoop! Snoop-a-loop! Snoop-a-loop! Hey, no, it's cool! It's cool.
Well, that's it for us. Hit the thumbs up for extra credit and let us know in the comments what your favorite frat house movie is, and we might just do an episode. Maybe a things you didn't know just about the Tasty Hoots and Revenge of the Nerds. I mean, whatever you want to see next. I have no personal preference one way or the other. Thanks for watching and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies and sometimes marble bags right here on Things You Didn't Know.